Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the data damage animated typeface. I'm going to show you exactly how to get up and running with this After Effects project file. So when you get the After Effects file, it will open up into this numbered system. 00, zero is the sample composition that I that you probably have seen that has just a little preview animation of exactly what this typeface has to offer and what's available. You can use any of the elements that you want from this if you'd like, but it's here just so you can mess around and see how I created it. Um, but the actual animated typeface is in here, the 01 and 02. The long glitch, if you open it up, has numbers in here, 0 through 9, punctuations, and all of the uppercase letters. There's also a assembled metrics folder in here, or a composition in here, which you don't really need to pay attention to. I've already set up everything in this file, so you don't need to pay attention to it. Uh, it's there basically just for characteristic if you're using the characteristic script. Um, if not, then your After Effects will not um, know what's there. Uh, and then there's the shorter one. It's the exact same setup, except it's 18 frames instead of 31. So you got the numbers, punctuation, and uppercase where you can grab whatever you need, get up and running. The short one I feel like is much better for an animation because it feel, the pacing feels just right, while the longer one seems to animate on for too long of a time. But it's nice to have a mix and match of both of them in a composition just to give your animation a little bit of a variety, especially when you have letters that are the same. So let's just make a quick composition here. I'm going to call it hello. And I'm just going to set up a composition to show you how it works. Going into uppercase, and I'm just going to grab H-E-L-L-O. O and the E. Alright, so now I got all those. Just zoom out and lay all these out. H E L L and the O. Alright. So we have hello, all animating on and all ending about the same frame. So you can easily just do a little layer offsetting here so they all don't end on the same frame. But you'll notice the L's are doing the same type of animation. So you might want to think about moving into the long glitch, which is right here and just replace that file so now that one will animate a little bit longer than the rest of the letters which is a nice little variety and makes it a little bit more custom um, so now I'm gonna break this down if I were to set this up using the characteristic script uh, you open it up it will be in your Windows folder if you have it um, first you need to set it so click on the folder that you want, click set. In the text area, you type what you want. I'll type hello. Um, the animate will give you a bunch of extra options, which um, you'll definitely want most of the time unless you're making a giant composition and uh, don't want to bog down your system too much. Stagger time is basically staggering the time that I did just to offset the animation, which I'll leave at eight frames, and I will create. And there we go, automatically created for us. Scale this up a little bit, and it automatically animates in right here. Perfect. It's a lot quicker, and it's already kerned and everything. So if you're the 
animation things that are in here, part of characteristic is tracking. So you can track this in and out. Um, so right now it's left justified, but you can change the centering, be uh, centered or right justified. Uh, you can stagger the frames for when it starts the animation. Um, so it will animate one on at a time. You can uh, change the random time frame to be longer, so it takes longer for each one to come on. And then also you can just change the seed, which is really handy if you don't like how it's how this is laid out. You just mix up the seed a little bit. Perfect. Um, and then I'll go in and just select this L and do the exact same I think did before. Um, go into the long glitch, find the L, and replace it. And now I have uh, basically the same setup that I had before, but it's much quicker and simpler. Um, that's basically it. I'll break down this sample composition for just a bit. Um, so each composition has a camera that does some panning and there's usually a null associated with that camera that's moving the camera. Then there's three layers that are controlling all the background uh, glitching data information that's popping off in the background. And above that, right before it um, does a cut to the next scene, there's just some random like circles, pluses, X's, and then sometimes I throw in like uh, just like a random letter and just put like the first, like just this first frame in there, throw it in, and it just looks like a random shape. So it's pretty neat to, to just use that. Um, and then a lot of the times I would just do uh, time, enable time re remapping and then just hold on that frame for a few frames and then uh, maybe jump around to like five and then cut it or something like that. So yeah, that's basically how this scene was set up. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be able to get back to you relatively quickly and I can't wait to see what type of animations you make with this. Thanks.